Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. Hello to everyone that is here with me on the live stream on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here. And hello to those that are listening on the podcast right now. I'm so glad that you are here. So today's show, we are going to be talking about how to deal with cross beak. And if you don't know what that is, stay tuned. Um, and we're going to talk about how to have a mixed flock and how to have a good experience with your mis mixed flock. How to have your, how, <laughs> let's see, how do I put this? How your mixed flock can have its best life. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, if you want to submit a question to Bok Talk, you can do so by going to my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com. Go to the contact section. There's a little drop down menu, and you're going to choose ask a chicken question. And then I will get it. And if it is relevant to what we are going to be talking about, I will answer it on Bok Talk and you'll be famous. <laughs> you'll be chicken famous. <laughs> uh, so I just want to say hello to some people that are on the chat. We've already got several people people here. Yay! Uh, 13, moon homes, 13 Moons Homestead. She is such an awesome moderator, you guys. Um, if you have questions, you can tag her. Um, actually, if you if you have a question, let me rephrase that. First, I'm going to answer the questions that were submitted through my website. And then at some point, I am going to open up the questions in the live stream so that I can answer them. But if you if you have anything you need to ask about, you can tag 13 Moons Homestead. Um, because she knows everything about Chickenlandia. <laughs> uh, and definitely go check out her channel because she's awesome. Kiss My Grass Acres is here. Great to see you. Carmen A. Hello, hello. Kara Blake is here. Yay. Uh, Saffron Moon, Sunny's Place. Hello. So many people here. Mole Rat. What a name. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And my garden and the dinosaurs who live there. Thank you so much for being here. All right, guys. So um, I was thinking this week, I just have, I've just been doing a lot of reflection. Okay. <laughs> um, when I got the question about Crossbeak, I could really relate with it because I, I know what it's like when you have baby chicks and you bring them home and you're super excited and happy and everything. And then you realize there's like something wrong with them and, and what a nerve wracking situation that can be. And it, you know, a lot of you have been following me for a long time. And if you have, thank you so much. Um, and you probably also know that for many years I've been an ambassador for a company called scratch and peck feeds. So part of my responsibilities as an ambassador at one point, I don't do it anymore, but um, was to go to different locations and um, kind of like talk to customers and stuff and like showcase scratch and peck um, and be there for questions and stuff. Now I just teach classes, but I didn't do that this year because there were no classes, <laughs> but um Way back when I used to go to usually when people, when local stores had like baby chick events, I would go to them and I would set up a little table and I would talk to people about scratch and peck feeds. Well, I stopped doing that because I just, my schedule was getting too full. Chickenlandia was taken off. And also I wanted to concentrate more on like teaching classes and doing seminars but I had a secret reason <laughs> that I that I didn't tell them and, and they won't know until now that I quit doing it. And it was because I would go to like these chick days events, these baby chick events, and these farm stores would have baby chicks and just, you know, not through any fault of the farm store. But when you have that amount of baby chicks, there's going to be one that isn't doing that well. That's just the nature of that's just nature 
really. Um, and so I would end up leaving every event with some baby chick that was like, <laughs> you know, had some kind of issue. Here I am with a baby chick in my shirt <laughs> driving home. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is happening again. I've got to stop doing this. And I would try to nurse the the chicks back to health. And usually they didn't make it. It's just too much, too much stress. Um, and you know, I just had to, like, that was part of the reason I stopped doing it because it's so stressful. So I really feel it. Like when I get questions or, uh, when I get messages from people and they're like, oh my gosh, something's wrong with my baby chick, you know? And I, cross beak is definitely something that is, uh, relative, you know, more, I get that questions about that a lot. Um, because it does happen. And if you don't know what cross beak is, it's basically when the top part, you know, the top part of the beak and the bottom part of the beak are growing in different directions. And it's also called scissor beak. Um, and it, it's obviously it's not great because what happens is, is that the chicken cannot peck properly. Um, sometimes they can, if it's not very serious, uh, they can get along just fine with very little intervention, but a lot of times they can't peck properly. And that means that they can't eat properly. So we're going to be talking about that in just a second. Um, I do want to say hello to green dream project who is here. <laughs> they are out in the desert and, uh, green dream project just posted an emoji of a smiley that is melting. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm guessing it's pretty hot out there. Uh, check out their channel. Very awesome. Out in the desert doing all kinds of amazing off-grid stuff. Um, and let's see if there's anybody else that I missed. 50 chickens in a hen house. Hello. Thank you for moderating today. And I think, oh, creating family code. Me and the chicken kiddos are here. They love your videos. <laughs> I'm glad. BB363, uh, thank you for being here. All right, so I'm just going to jump into this question. It is from Kara, who's here on the chat today. Hello, Kara. I am a new chicken keeper, and I have nearly eight-week-old chicks. Congratulations on your new babies. One has a malformed beak. We noticed it about week two. The bottom and the top part of her beak are misaligned. She seems to still be able to eat and drink fine and is growing at the same rate as the others. Uh, that's a really good sign. Basically, in my observation, it doesn't seem to bother her. Do you have any experience with a chicken uh, with this situation? Any advice to make sure she continues to have a good quality of life? Um, so I'm glad that you care about her quality of life and that you're looking to support her and make sure that, um, you know, she has her best chicken life. So we already talked a little bit about cross beak. Um, it's also called scissor beak. Um, it can be caused by genetics. So a lot of people will say, you know, and, and this is smart, I think, if you do have a cr chicken with cross beak, you really don't want to have that chicken in a breeding program um, because then you're likely to have baby chicks with, you know, more, more chickens with cross beak and you don't want to really continue that. Um, so it can be caused by genetics and can, it can be caused by an issue in incubation. It can be a nutritional deficiency and I have also read that it can be from not being able to, and if you, if you watch chickens, they will like rub their beaks on the ground. Um, you know, when they have stuff on their beaks or whatever, they'll rub it on the ground. But when they are in cages, they can't do that. So I have read that there are instances where they get cross beak from not being able to do that. And um, that's why I say, you know, I really prefer chickens to be on ground, be able to peck and scratch, be able to wipe their, their beaks, um, rather than having them on wire, at least not, um, all the time. 
Um, if it is a genetic issue, it usually you will tell from birth. So I'm thinking, Kara, probably with your baby chick, it's probably genetic and you just didn't notice it until week two. Um, if it's a nutritional issue, then it will probably show up around week four to 12. So unfortunately, there's really no that I know of, maybe, maybe you guys know of one, but that I, you know, from my research and from my experience, there's no treatment for cross beak, meaning that you can't like reverse it. Um, but you can usually manage it. So that's what I would fo focus on is, is managing it. The main thing, like I said, is it will affect whether or not they will be able to eat. Um, and sometimes they can eat a little bit, but they can't eat enough to really thrive. So you're going to want to continue to keep an eye on her and make sure that she's getting food, that she's getting water, that she's growing at a good rate. It's normal for them to be maybe a little bit smaller than their flock mates, um, but you want them to still be thriving and surviving well. Um, so one thing that I have seen really helpful for people is if you are on Facebook, there's actually Facebook support groups for scissor beak chicken parents. <laughs> um, and they seem to be really helpful, compassionate groups. Um, you will like, if you were to go on a chicken group and say, Oh, you know, I've got a, I've got a cross beak chick. There will be people that say, well, you need to get rid of, you know, you need to call that chicken. Um, but then there are other people that are like, no, you know, you can take care of it and it can live a good life. You just might need to have a little extra attention on that chicken, depending on the severity of it. And those are the people that you're going to find in a chicken cross beak support group. <laughs> so I would recommend just doing a Google search. Um, I'm not a member of the groups, but I know that they're there. Um, doing a Google search and joining those groups. And they they will really there will there will be lots of knowledge in there for you as far as managing their cross beak issue. Um, so you know you might have to trim the beak as the chicken grows. Um, and that's another way that these groups will help because they can tell you exactly how to do it. Um, and then one thing to keep in mind is that cross, since cross beaks can't peck, usually they need to, they have to learn how to eat differently. And of course the, the will to survive is very strong in any animal or, or human. So they will try to learn how to eat and usually what they do is they, they will like scoop up food rather than peck at it. So sometimes it's better to give them like a wet mash feed, um, or you can wet down their pellet feed or their crumble feed and make a mash and put it in a, in a bowl that's kind of low. And that way they can kind of like scoop it up and get it into their beak. Um, and, it, you know, it may take them a little bit to figure it out. But you, like I said, their their will to survive is very high. Um, now, I did say before that it could be a nutritional deficiency. But, you know, even with vitamins, with supplementation, it's 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 not going to reverse it. Or at least I, I've not heard of a case where it's been reversed. Um, but a good vitamin and mineral boost, especially right now when they're little would be a good idea. Um, because like I said, they're usually smaller than their flock mates. So that, uh, nutritional boost will just help them along. It certainly can't hurt them. So that's what I would do. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes if, if it's very severe, their quality of life just is not good. Um, and then you will have to make some hard decisions. But Kara, for your situation, it sounds like it's not very serious and that she's likely going to live a great little chicken life. Um, you may need to manage it at some point. But I have I have high hopes for you and your little chicken. <laughs> so thank you so much for sending me that question, Kara. Little Mountain Life, thank you so much for being here. PG Nano Farm is here. Thank you. One of my trusty moderators. Lydia Fink is here. Thank you so much for being here. 
Mole Rat says, speaking of rubbing their beaks, my chicks would rub their beaks on my arm like a napkin. <laughs> like on my on my pants you know it's like okay yeah go ahead you know <laughs> go ahead and do it wolf mango san thank you for being here i've got 30 some chickens free range loved so awesome love my little chicken babes oh that's awesome i love to hear that all right we're going to move on to our next question it is from amy she sent me this question on my website, welcome to chickenlandia.com, which you can do. Just go to my website, go to the contact section and uh, pick ask a chicken question and send it to me. So Amy says, I'm 15 years old and I absolutely love having chickens. Yay, I absolutely love hearing that. <laughs> Our small flock recently reached the end of their life, sadly, as they were quite old. Well, thank I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm so glad they had a good chicken life. With our new flock, I want to create a diverse flock. I have done a ton of research on breeds of chickens. Good for you. I would love for them to be friendly and good layers. The chicken flock I ideally want to create is two golden comets, which is like a, a hybrid, very good layers. Two Americanas. So I'm assuming that you're getting these from the farm store. Um, if they're from the farm store, then they are likely Easter eggers. Um, but they do call them Americanas. But uh, usually purebred Americanas, you wouldn't get them unless you went through a breeder, which maybe maybe that's what you're doing. I'm not sure. Um, and one Polish hen, of course. <laughs> you got you got to have a little pizzazz. <laughs> I read that Americana, although big, usually get the most pecked because of their calmness. So um, I have not heard that. I have not heard that. Uh, I have a, an Easter egger. She's actually an olive egger, which is an Easter legger, egger that <laughs> lays green eggs or olive colored eggs. Um, she is not at the bottom of the pecking order. She is very high on the pecking order. And in fact, sometimes I have some issues with her because she can be, you know, a little bit pushy. <laughs> so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that one, that I think they'll be just fine in your mixed flock. Um, I know that when mixing crested breeds, it can lead to getting bullied. I want the best for a Polish chicken. Some people, like yourself... Um, have Polish chickens in with other breeds, but I also want it. I want good layers, but I also want something a little flashy. <laughs> I get it. I want the best for my little flock and I'm willing not to get a Polish if that would be better for her. So, um, it is true that sometimes a crested breed will get picked on in a mixed flock. Um, most of you guys know I have a, I have a Polish chicken. Her name is Pac-Man. <laughs> She is at the very top of the pecking order. She does not get picked on and she does quite well. Um, but it's not a guarantee. Like I said, you know, for my flock, it certainly isn't happening. It's, it's, it really has more to do with the individual chicken and with the personality of your flock. Um, I think, you know, if you're concerned and I know you were wanting to get, you said in a different part of the email that you you wanted to get them at 15 weeks. But I will say that you'll have a better chance of them getting along quite well together if the younger that you get them. So if you get them as chicks and it's a mixed flock, you are less likely to have an issue. That doesn't mean that you won't have an issue, but it will be less likely. You are less likely to have an issue if you have more than one Polish chicken in your flock. Um be careful because Polish chickens usually aren't sexed, um, which means that they are sold as usually a straight run. And that means you might get a rooster. Okay. So that's something to be aware of. And that would be a reason to wait until they're, they're a little bit older and you can tell what you're getting. Um, so these are all just things that I'm laying out for you, for you to consider. Um, but, you know, if you get more than one, then your flock is used to more than one funny looking bird. 
<laughs> you know, they kind of look like is Big Bird. I think Big Big Bird is a Polish chicken. <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> um, if you really have your heart set on getting a Polish chicken, then what I would do is go ahead and do it, but have a plan for if it doesn't work out. Um, you, you mentioned also that you didn't want to get any roosters, so you would need to have a plan for that just in case, um, which probably if you get them older, you, you won't get any roosters. But, you know, I, I just think I, I'm leaning towards, yes, go ahead and do it, but have a plan. Now, if you just cannot bear to give a chicken away, which I actually understand, then I, I, you know, that would be a reason for you not to risk it. Um, you know, the main thing when I think about having a mixed flock and I have a very mixed flock, I've got itty bitty chickens, I've got big chickens, I've got funny looking chickens. <laughs> um, is that you, you really have to have a good understanding of the pecking order and you have to understand that there is going to be a pecking order in your flock and that, you know, chickens exist as a flock. So there's always going to be someone at the top and there's going to be someone at the bottom. And what that means is you will see squabbling sometimes. Um, and and some for some people, that's really uncomfortable. Now, I'm not talking about chickens really bullying each other, like chickens not being able to get to food um, and or water or chickens drawing blood on each other that that's not good that's not good flock dynamics something something's wrong and there needs to be some balance put back into your flock if that is happening but you know every morning when i go out to chickenlandia and i feed the chickens the the ones at the top of the pecking order they eat first and they will they will let the the other ones know like uh uh i'm eating first like you need to go over there and you need to wait and then when I'm done, I'll walk away and you can come and eat. And, is, you know, one of the ones that does that is Kiki. And she's my smallest chicken. <laughs> she will be like, no, nope, I'm eating right now. You need to go. You, you need to, you know, step to the left <laughs> and, and give me a minute while I get my fill. So um, what I do, because my flock is so mixed, I will put food and water in a few different locations. And so that kind of cuts down on the flock order stress. Um, and I just keep an eye on them to make sure that everybody's getting food and water. Um, but I do understand that, you know, there, there is going to be posturing, there's going to be some squabbling. Um, and if, as long as it's not like it's something severe where, you know, a chicken is having to hide all day or, a chicken is getting hurt or they can't eat, then I'm good with it. Um, and I think that's the, that's, that's just the, the chicken way, you know, it's different, it's different than humans. Um, they just think of everything in terms of surviving as a flock and, or, and in order to do that, they need to like maintain this certain order and that's fine. So I think, you know, even if, if you have a very mixed flock, which is super fun, you know, I know that because I have one, even if you are witnessing some pecking order stuff and it's like, ugh, you know, um, they're still living their best chicken life. <laughs> so, so you can feel good about it. All right, guys. So I just want to say hi to some people that have come into the chat here. Um, I see suburban homestead W Y. So what does the W Y stand for? Can you tell me? Cause I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. And who else? Artisan Bart is here. Thank you so much for being here. So guys, those are my questions that I got, um, through my website. Welcome to chickenlandia.com. And if you'd like, you can go to my website go to the contact section, click ask a chicken question, and that's how you can submit your question to Bok Talk. I'd love to see your question, so you should definitely do that. Roberto Molina, thank you so much for being here. So I'm just going to open up. Oh, Kara says, <laughs> 
So Kara, who had the cross beak chicken, says, thank you so much. We've named her Beaker. <laughs> meep, meep. <laughs> that is great. I am going to now uh, open the stream for questions. So if you are in the comments right now uh, and you have a question, if you can post it in all caps, then I can see it. And if I know the answer, I'm going to answer it. <laughs> Creating Family Code says, Our four-year-old named our sil silver lace wine dot Lady Gordon. And my daughter named one Chickaletta. Now, I know what that's from. What is that from? Is that from Paw Patrol? <laughs> you know I got kids. <laughs> uh, and then we also have a splash Cochin named Falcor. That's a great name. That's a great name. <laughs> Never-ending story. All right. So, oh, uh, Kiss My Grass Acres had a question. And it is, okay, let me start over for the podcast. <laughs> Kiss My Grass Acres has a question. Is it normal for our chickens to not be loud? <laughs> they will chirp when we approach them, but other than that, they are really quiet. Um, I think that's great. Uh, I think, and I think that's normal. Um, if you, if you hang around with them, then you'll start to notice their little sounds and they even have like a little chicken language and it's pretty neat. Um, there's a book it's by, uh, I can't remember her name, but the, uh, her online presence is Tilly's Nest and she's got a book called how to speak chicken. And I have, I've read a little bit of it, but not all of it. Um, but it's a it's cute and it's really informative. And I guess she has spent a lot of time just like listening to chickens and um, interpreting their language. <laughs> so you might want to check that out. But I think that's okay. It's certainly not a cause for alarm. Um, I think it's great that you have quiet chickens. You may you may want to like start a, a a breeding business <laughs> and sell those to people who live in the city. <laughs> Brittany B, thank you so much for being here. I have seven meal floor bantams, two roos, two brahmas, six sapphire gems. They all grew up together and get along great. That's great. That is great. Kiss My Grass Acres has another question. Our run is 100 square feet. Is that big enough for five chickens? Yes. What you want uh, is at the minimum a 10 square feet per standard size chicken in the run. Uh, Carmen A asks, can we talk about different colors and textures of chicken poop? <laughs> I want to know what's normal and what's not. Um, basically, there, there are so many different varieties of chicken poop. <laughs> and usually they are all normal. Um, in the summer, you might see some more watery poop. That's normal. You may even see a little bit of a red tinge in the poop. And that can be really alarming to people because they'll be like, oh my gosh, it's coccidiosis. You know, they're, they got blood in their poop. Um, that's actually intestinal lining and it's it's normal. It's like shedding. It's, it's normal to see that in their poop. Um, now, what would not be normal is very obvious blood in the poop um, or worms. That's not normal. But I think more often than not, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty varied. Um, you can go online. I, I know I'm pretty sure that Fresh Eggs, both Fresh Eggs Daily and the Chicken Chick have a thing where they talk about chicken poop with a whole bunch of pictures. I don't have that on my website yet. I figured it's been done. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can go on there. It's, it's really informative. Um, but I think uh, more often than not, there's not a reason to panic about chicken poop. Will chickens eat harlequin bugs? I don't know. I, I assume if it's a bug, they'll eat it. Artisan bard. I'm not, I'm actually not familiar with that bug. Uh, <laughs> creating family code. 
I'd love to know if you have any good advice to keep squirrels away. Netting over your chicken area. Um, it's, it's tough if you have, you know, a very large area where your chickens are, are, you know, have access to, it's tough to net a whole area like that. In my chicken yard, the squirrels don't really come in because, uh, you know, we have hawks and also I live by a very forested area and we will even get raccoons during the day in definitely in the early spring and fall um, when food is more scarce or if they have babies, they'll come because they, they need food. Um, so for that reason, my whole chicken area is netted. Um, another thing that you can do is around the perimeter of your chicken yard, you can get uh, rags, old rags and soak them in ammonia it doesn't smell good <laughs> and be careful because you don't want to be inhaling it, but um, you can hang those up around the perimeter of your chicken yard and that will make any critter. Hopefully it's not a hundred percent, but it will make any critter think twice about going into the chicken yard because what they think is that there's a larger predator around when you do that. Um, but yeah, it's tough dealing with squirrels. I've had a few incidences where it's like, you know, where's why are my chickens going through their feed so fast? And it was because the squirrel was getting in. Um, there are there are feeders. I can't use them because I um, I have tiny bantams and they wouldn't be able to operate it. But I, I believe it's called a grandpa feeder, and it's the chickens learn to press on it and then they eat from it. I'm fairly certain a smart squirrel could figure it out after a while, but, but maybe not. Um, so that's one thing that you might want to look up, the grandpa feeder. Lydia Fink, let me see, you said you had a question right above Carmen's question. I'm not seeing it. Can you uh, send that again? Sorry about that. I'm, I'm really not seeing it. Oh, Artisan Bar says they are stink bugs. They eat cabbage, et cetera. I have an infestation. I, I would think that they would eat those. I would think that they would. Artisan Bard says, have you tried the Saturday Lime yet? I have, and it's great. I keep hearing about, so there's a company called First Saturday Lime, and um, it's, you can use it in your coop to control odor, to control insects, and it seems like a great product. I have not used it, but I've heard really good things about it too. Sunny's place says, what's the laying life of a regular sized chicken like Buff Orpington? Um, it depends on where they're from. Like if they're from a, a hatchery, then I would say probably four to six years is their laying life. Um, just because they're really bred to, or are you talking about the laying, li the laying life? Sorry, I was talking about their regular life. Um, they will lay the most in the first two years. After that, it will taper off. Um, it really depends on whether or not they're pushed to lay. Uh, if they're if they're hatchery chickens, they will lay a lot. They will lay more in the first two years, and then it will taper off a little bit faster. If they're not bred to lay so much, then their laying life will probably be longer. Um, it really just depends on the individual ch chicken. It also depends on the climate where you are. But I would say, you know, I would get, I would, you know, I mean, I have, I have a buff. I had a buff and she laid her whole life. I think she lived to be about six and she was still laying when she died. Unfortunately, a raccoon got her and it was awful. Um, that's why I have netting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think just in general, the first two years are the best and then it, it will taper off after that. Um, 
But the less that you push them to lay, the longer their laying life will be. Artisan Bard, what do you do for extreme heat to help the chickens? I've got water and frozen treats. So I actually, I don't know if you saw it, but I just did a video about that. Um, oh gosh, what is it called? <laughs> what is it called? Summer is dangerous for chickens. Here's what to do or something like that. Um, but basically it is a video that I did that just gives some ideas on how you can support your chickens through the summer. Now I live in a, in a fairly mild climate. This is Bellingham, Washington. I think right today it's like 70 degrees. Um, it doesn't get super duper hot here and it doesn't get super duper cold here. So, um, I would definitely refer you to that video and I'm going to post it in the description and I'll also post it in the show notes for those of you that are listening to the podcast. Uh, so, you know, do what you're doing, make sure that they're hydrated. You're giving them clean water, cool water, uh, frozen treats, make sure they get lots of shade. Um, a lot of it is, is very common sense. And then if you watch the video, you will see that there's a few, uh, you know, I go into more detail than, than I would be able to go into here. But um, the main thing is you want to keep them hydrated. Lydia, I'm looking for it right now. Why am I not seeing it, Lydia? I'm really not seeing it. And I don't know why. I wonder if like what I'm seeing right now, Lydia, is when you get to it, I have a question that's right above Carmen's and I don't see the question. Um, 13 moons. If you see Lydia's question, can you repost it, please? All right. Just looking for some more questions. Sometimes the it gets a little bit messed up. Yeah, I don't know, Lydia. Um, 13 Moons isn't seeing it either. I'm not sure what is going on. Little Mountain Life says, I'm so freaking jealous of your weather. You know, I grew up in Texas. Um, and I miss, I actually, it gets crazy hot there. And, and just like, so humid. And actually my sister lost a chicken to, um, heat stroke in Texas. So that's really hard, but I miss like going swimming, uh, you know, here, like really like swimming season is very short. <laughs> it's like a month, <laughs> but at least for people like me, I don't know. Some people go swimming when it's cold and I don't do that. Um, but, uh, you know, in Texas, it's like you swim for months and it's, it's hot and that's fun. I love that. Wendy T asks, I have a five month silky. What A's will she start laying? Um, she, she'll probably be, usually it happens around 20 weeks. It probably will take a little bit longer for a silky to start, to start laying. All right. Lydia's question. I think we've got it. Kiss My Grass Acres posted it. I have one Easter egger in particular who gets picked on. She is missing a bunch of her beard and some of her neck feathers. And I think a couple others are missing some beard feathers as well. Um, so Lydia, um, first of all, make sure that they're not molting, uh, because they can go through a molt in the spring and, and that does happen. Ha have you actually seen the bullying happen? Um, have you seen the, the, a particular chicken pecking feathers? If you have, then I actually posted a video recently, um, called how to Oh gosh, why can't I remember the name of any of my videos? <laughs> How to reform a bully chicken? I think that's the name. Um, and so I think that would be your first course of action to find out who's doing it. And then um, 
you can either remove that chicken from the flock partially. And I talk about this a little bit in the video. I'll post that video in the description and in the show notes. Or you can completely remove them from the flock and separate them to where they can't see their flock. Um, but I would start out with isolating them within their flock so that they can see their flock. The flock can see them, but they can't roost with them at night and they can't bully the, you know, they can't pull feathers. Um, and then if you're still, you know, I would do that for a few days. If you're still having an issue, then you can remove them completely from the flock for a week or two and then reintegrate them back into the flock. And what that should do, hopefully, is disrupt the um, the pecking order enough that it takes the bully chicken down a couple of notches. So that's what you're hoping for. Before, actually, let me back up here. Before you even do that, uh, I want you to evaluate what you're feeding your chickens. Make sure that they're getting enough nutrition. Make sure that they're not get that they're getting enough protein. Um, because, and make sure also that they have enough space. And I talk about this a lot in my video, um, and it should help. And, and that is a frustrating issue, but if you, you know, it will, it will take a little bit of observation to figure out what is going on. Okay, Lydia. No, no one has seen the question. Sorry about that. You know, okay, so Lydia is asking a question about water belly in chickens, and that is just like a really unfortunate condition that some chickens can get where they develop. Uh, it's kind of like the syndrome where they have, um, they have fluid in their bellies and it has to be drained. Um, Lydia, off the top of my head, I don't have anything nutritionally other than like basic nutrition. You know, you're going to want to make sure that they're getting their, their basic nutritional needs met um, with good feed, good quality feed. And um, if you are doing um, scraps, good quality scraps, meaning if you're eating donuts and hot dogs, don't give those to your chickens. <laughs> but if you're eating greens and salad, you can give that to your chickens and making sure that the majority of, of their diet is, is their feed. Cause you want them to get, um, just that well-rounded nutrition, um, probably a boost of vitamins, electrolytes, probiotics would not hurt. Um, but I am going to look a little bit into that for you, Lydia. And, um, I'll make a note of it and I will talk about that more next week and see what I can come up with. I'm going to talk to, you know, I have, there's, there's chicken landia has a little team. I've got a vet tech that I work with and I also have a very experienced, um, uh, consultant that I work with. And sometimes I will kind of run things by them and be like, okay, you know, let's come up with something for this. So I'm going to look into that Lydia for you. And we will talk about it. And I may just like add that into the queue for next week. Or uh, it won't be next week. It'll be in a couple of weeks. So we are getting towards the end of our time today. We're about 43 minutes. And you know, in Chickenlandia, we like to keep it short and sweet. I thank you guys so much for being here today. Um, remember, you can find me not only on YouTube, but also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and yes, even TikTok. <laughs> My 10-year-old got me into it. <laughs> um, so love to see you in those places. Um, and then uh, make sure and check out my video this Wednesday that we'll be posting, hopefully, if I finish it in time, because I'm still not done with it. Um, it is all about a new herb garden that I grew for my chickens. So I'm growing some perennial herbs and some annual herbs for the chickens this year. 
very excited about it. This is my first year doing it. Um, usually I will buy, I have, I do use herbs with my chickens, but usually I'll buy like a prepackaged thing. This year I grew it and it's so extra. You guys are going to want to see it. So um, make sure to check that out on, uh, on Wednesday. My videos come out 10 a.m. on Wednesday. And if you, if you are listening to the podcast, you'll have to go back to the future to watch it. <laughs> That doesn't even make sense. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here today. We'll see you next time. Remember, you're always welcome in Chickenlandia. Bye-bye.